Hi, I'm Ross O'Brien with The Economist Corporate Network in Hong Kong. We've just wrapped up our Asian innovation agenda, a uh, discussion on cloud computing and utility resource models in the IT world and the impact that's going to have on Asian innovation. I'm joined here by Steve Zhu, who is the CIO of OCL, and um, he was my co-moderator for, for this session. And I wanted to just kind of get your impressions on, on how it went, Steve, and, and specifically, I wanted to ask your opinions on this on this notion that was moved during the discussion um, around cloud computing lowering the barrier for innovation. Get your thoughts on that. Right. I, I at the closing I comment that for corporate computing, look at uh, is something new, so it, it justified some some effort. Right. So right. if you look at the hardware and software through the utilization model that you can say very percent that could justify some project and you need to get it started. Yeah. So that is on the corporate side. I think on the on the business side which is the innovation. So now the IT should not be the barrier and so you can have new ideas come up and mm. get something done and experiment that get some money back and then start to do it again. So I, I think that's the way I think the whole thing is about pacing now. So right. it's not a project that it will take you three years. So so we talk about six months, six months, and so so that need to keep going. So the, these new technologies kind of help help accelerate a firm's own innovation cycle. I thought it was quite interesting how uh, the point was made that yes, we have concerns about security and and there is risk attached to uh, cloud models, but that. Adopting cloud could also be a form of, of risk mitigation. You could use it to, uh, to, um, to if, if you like, hedge against further IT investments or even R and D investments. I mean, ha have have you guys uh, actually looked at that at, at OCL, or or have you seen examples of that in in play? I think we we try a different way. As I said, that the the private car we. We virtualize our platform so that we can make that very percent saving, so on, so on. Right. So that's a part of it. Of course, success build on success. So, so it's easier to do that. Way. So, so right. it's a matter of how you can formulate smaller scope things and then to demonstrate the, this new capability and uh, also a shape of new organization. How to put people together to to make it happen. I think. Right. I think there's just too many ways to look at things, but then I think as long as you start to doing it from different origins, still okay, and, yep. and you will start to learn this whole landscape. Right, right. And, and again, the costs being what they are, the, 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 the barriers to entry are a lot lower, so just starting to do something is, is something that now is kind of you know, more budget friendly than, than it was. Right. In, right. In, in, Experiment, in get some money back, we invest. I think that that's the concept. Right, right. Now, and finally, just tell me a little bit about your, your thoughts on uh, on the overlay of of social networking into the enterprise environment. I know you've done a, uh, in this kind of experimental um, uh, model, you've done a little bit of experimenting in, in incorporating uh, Twitter and social media into your own um, enterprise um, operations. How, how has that gone for you? I think first that we deploy a, a kind of inside corporate uh, social networking. So so it eases the mind of the CEO that that is not talking about all the business in the public. Yes. Or Google searchable. So that that is the first barrier. So something that under your control, and so you can start this. But then ending up social networking is all about people's mentality and thinking. Yes. Right? So how you encourage good ideas, start to gel, start to get people interact and, and talk about their ideas. Right. I, I think that's the whole different ball game of like I give you a job to do and you do it finish this within certain time frame. So it's like the bottom of thing is quite different. So and, 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 and again it is a it is a, a tool for enabling innovation. I mean if you're giving a voice to um, to members of the organization, and, and, and I'm assuming outside the organization as well? Uh, I think outside is that ending up, you, you, you have something outside, inside, but, but then you need to have this still differentiation between inside yes. and outside, because okay. you have a PR person, why? Because you are prepared to talk to the public, so yes. there's a different yes. language and all that. Yes. 
So, but to get the organization ready, is you you have this inside, so it becomes something normal. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So, so, so then you get ready. Normal, so this yeah. whole gateway between inside and outside, I think, still need time to 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 make it solid. But but doubtless a very a very powerful tool on in, in terms of uh, defining a company's innovation strategies. Yes. Steve, thank you very much for your time. I'm Ross O'Brien for the Economist Corporate Network. Uh, thank you very much for watching.